Norbert K asks, in what direction you see science heading? What should change and what are your plans to change modern science? Well, <laughs> as I mentioned in my book, Visions, a previous book, we are making the historic transition between the age of discovery to the age of mastery. We're no longer simply looking at the dance of genes. Mm -hmm. We're becoming choreographers of genes. Yeah. We're no longer looking at the dance of atoms. We are becoming choreographers of atoms with nanotechnology mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And we're no longer simply looking at building chips that can compute more and more. We're looking at what is intelligence and how do we break it down. So mm -hmm. this means that in the future, we may have the power of a Greek god. Think of Greek mythology. Yeah. In Greek mythology, the gods have the power to animate the inanimate, like in Pygmalion mm -hmm. in My Fair Lady, or to recreate new life forms out of scratch, almost. Right. We will have that power. Yeah, it's an Craig, awesome power. Craig Venter al already has that power. <laughs> 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 He's making his little microbes from scratch right now. <laughs> but pretty soon we're going to have a human body shop. Uh, mm -hmm. Already we mm -hmm. can grow skin, we can grow bones, cartilage, noses, ears, heart valves, blood vessels. The first mm -hmm. bladder, human bladder, was grown yeah. from one's own cells about six months ago. And I think last week I read an article about um, a three-dimensional printer that print, prints blood vessels. Mm -hmm, that's right. I had, I had a chance to see it. It's at Wake Forest University. Oh, how, how we actually did some filming there at that uh, laser at, at that printer. <laughs> Instead of <laughs> inkjet coming out, it actually cells. Cell, cells come out. Yeah. Next in line is the liver. Within five years, uh, we hope to get the first liver either out of a printer or out of a mold of some sort. And think of all the drunks out there that are going to love the just idea. Thinking, I know. <laughs> no more cirrhosis of the liver, you know? Yes! Yeah, <laughs> you can grow your own liver. The pancreas, maybe after that, mm -hmm. uh, maybe cure diabetes, who knows? Which would be such a, such a wonderful achievement for so many people. And after that, perhaps even the spinal cord, spinal cord injuries, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. Parkinson's. With animals, we can do experiments that are unethical in humans, right. but we can inject. We can inject uh, brain cells into a damaged spinal cord of mm -hmm. a mouse, a mouse that can barely walk with its two front legs, but not the two hind legs. Mm -hmm. And after a few weeks, the mouse uses all four limbs to walk. It's an amazing video. This is impossible, medically right. impossible, regeneration right. of a spinal cord. It's not and it's already been done. Yeah. It's been done already. So I can see that in the future, we may have the option of recreating the human form. In mice, we've already found the, the, the smart gene, as they call it, mm -hmm. for better memory. Right. They're called smart mice. We've all, well, we already found the gene for the Mighty Mouse gene, mm -hmm. uh, or the Schwarzenegger gene if you're in California. <laughs> so strong mice. <laughs> <laughs> and they have counterparts in humans. Uh, we mm -hmm. too have the counterpart of the Smart Mouse gene and the, the Schwarzenegger gene. And so we may be in the process of self-creation, in which case laws may have to be passed, uh, sermons are going to have to be given. How far yeah. are we going to redesign ourselves if we begin to understand the aging process? and we begin to extend the human lifespan. Right. You know that for yeast cells, the world's record is, we can multiply the lifespan of yeast cells by a factor of 10. 10 times longer than the average yeast cell in the laboratory. We did that just about six months ago. Humans, well, who knows, but we may be able to tinker with the human lifespan right. because we're beginning to isolate the genes for aging. Mm -hmm. And in the future, all of us will have a CD-ROM with all our genes on it. We'll scan <laughs> millions of these CD-ROMs, an owner's manual for our body. We'll scan the genes of old people, mm -hmm. scan the genes of young people by the millions, and then subtract. Those are the genes for aging. We'll know exactly where aging is concentrated. Right. And we already know that it's the mitochondria, where mm -hmm. most of the aging process takes place. In your car, right. where does your car age? Well, the engine. the engine. Where right. in the engine? The spark yes. plugs, yes. The, uh, the place mm -hmm. where carbon deposits gum up. Mm -hmm. That's the mitochondria of the cell. And we have cell repair mechanisms that mm -hmm. we will accentuate. And we will extend the lifespan of a human being. That's coming. I, I th yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. It's going to open up a whole new world. I mean, people in bioethics are, are already starting to consider it, mm -hmm. the possibilities, which I think it's good to be ahead of the curve so that we don't end up, you know, maybe getting 
having laws that are too antiquated before we get there. Right. And this also, from a physics point of view, mm -hmm. offers the possibility of enhancing a human being. For mm -hmm. example, telepathy. Telepathy, of course, is the stuff of hokum and fortune tellers. Right. And However, we think we can get limited forms of telepathy today, which I mentioned in my book, mm -hmm. Physics of the Impossible. Today at Brown University, you take a stroke victim who is paralyzed. Paralyzed, cannot communicate with the outside world. Put a chip right on top of the brain, mm -hmm. connect that chip to a laptop, and the person by sheer thought can manipulate the cursor of the screen, and that person can now play video games. That person can now answer emails, send emails, surf the web, right. and he is paralyzed. Think of this is going to revolutionize the way we deal with paralyzed people. Right. And with normal people, we're going to take that object, which is about two inches tall on somebody's <laughs> head, yeah. miniaturize it, stick it into people's brains if they want it, and you'll surf the web by thinking about it. No more right. mouse, no more stuff like that, booting up your computer. Right. You'll just think about it and have the World Wide Web at your disposal. Well, there are already uh, there are cell phones that are being designed with the little head pieces so that they um, record and react to the, um, the pre-motor impulses, the mm -hmm. ones, the thoughts about speaking so that you can actually speak over a cell phone without having to use your voice. And also <laughs> with uh, FR fMRI scans, this is causing a legal problem because mm -hmm. lie detectors can be based on brain scans. Right. Uh, telling a lie takes more energy than telling the truth. To tell a lie, you have to know the truth, know the cover-up, and the consequences of the cover-up, and the internal consistency of the cover-up. Right. Well, that's a lot of energy, and you can pick that up very easily yep. on a brain scan. And this year is going to go to court. Uh, an insurance company denied somebody's claim, saying that you set your own house on fire. Wow. And the guy said, no, I'm going to sue, and I'm going to prove it by going to court and having my brain scanned in front of a judge. Oh, my gosh. So it's going to be. Already. It's already. It's, it's already, already happening. Of in the future, <laughs> we may have a dictionary of thoughts, you know, different emotions, hate, love. We'll scan people's brains and have a dictionary. This brain pattern corresponds to love. This right. brain pattern corresponds with a, a dictionary of thought. Not quite telepathy, but we're getting there very fast. 